In this video, I'm going to show you five easy stretches that can relieve sciatic pain quickly. But I'm also going to explain to you why some people will not respond to these stretches or any stretches for that matter to relieve sciatic pain. Stay tuned. Hi, my name is Dr. Frank Altenrath and I'm a corrective care chiropractor in Creskill, New Jersey. And in this video, I'm going to give you five exercises that we give to our patients with sciatica that in many cases give them instant relief. But before I do that, I just want to explain to you what sciatica is and what it is not, and then why some people will not respond to these exercises or any exercises for that matter. So let's get started. So to begin with, sciatica is not a condition. It is a way to describe the symptoms that you are feeling. Now these symptoms are usually a burning, aching, or shooting pain, numbness, tingling that could start in the back, go down the buttocks into the butt, down the back of the leg into the feet. Sitting may make it worse, uh, and it usually affects one side over the other. And it's usually going to be caused by some sort of compression, irritation, or inflammation of the sciatic nerve. So let's talk about the sciatic nerve. The sciatic nerve is the longest and thickest nerve in the body. It is composed of motor and sensory fibers. Motor meaning movement and sensory meaning touch, pain, things like that. And it can be described as really two nerves in one wrapped in the same connective tissue sheath. The two nerves are the common fibular nerve and the tibial nerve. Now in most of the population, this nerve branches off down the leg and starts to separate in the popliteal fossa region. This is the area behind the knee or near behind the knee. In about 12% of the population, this nerve uh, separates, not down here, but as it exits the pelvis. We'll explain why that will be an issue with whether you get relief from the stretches later. The nerve is composed of nerve fibers that come out of the low back from L4 and L5, along with S1, S2, and S3. So this region here, make up the nerve fibers that combine to make the sciatic nerve, which goes down your leg. And therefore, the pain that you might feel, the numbness, the tingling that you might feel uh, is also felt in the low back, in the buttocks right here, as well as all the way down the back of the leg into the foot. So just as we talked about how the sciatic nerve, which is really two nerves bundled in the same sheath, how it can separate normally with most people, it separates behind the knee in that region, it can separate earlier on as it exits the pelvis. So too, there are variations with how the nerve exits the pelvis with the muscular system. So in most cases, 88% of the time, the sciatic nerve runs underneath the piriformis muscle. And if you've ever heard of piriformis syndrome, this is the piriformis muscle. It's an external rotator of your hip. Um, and when this muscle is tight, it can compress on that sciatic nerve. As you can see, the sciatic nerve, which is cut here, runs underneath the piriformis and over the superior gemellus muscle. These are muscles of the hip area. Um, so most people, this is the anatomical configuration of the sciatic nerve in relation to these two muscles. But there are cases where the sciatic nerve, instead of running underneath the piriformis, will actually pierce through the piriformis muscle, or it will run over the piriformis muscle, or it will go around it in different configurations. All these different types of configurations, there's about four to six of them, of all these different types of nerve anatomies, these things can affect whether the exercises that we're going to show you help or do not help. So again, if sciatica symptoms are caused by this nerve being compressed or irritated by the muscles that it passes over or through, the piriformis, the hamstrings, the superior gemellus, or any of the other configurations that the nerve can have, then the stretches may help immediately. As you stretch to loosen these muscles, it can take pressure off of that nerve and cause instant relief. So since sciatica is caused by some kind of irritation, compression, or inflammation of the nerve, then the three things that will cause sciatica are going to be either disc issues, joint issues, or muscular issues. We spoke previously about the muscular issues, but let's talk about the disc issues or the joint issues. 
if you have an issue like a bulging disc that causes sciatica, as the bulging disc presses out and presses onto that nerve, you'll get, you may get sciatic type symptoms. Those probably won't be helped too much by the stretches. Uh, if you have bone spurs, for example, which is a joint issue, the bone spurs where they could be growing inside the spinal canal where the nerve or the spinal cord is, those bone spurs, if they're pressing on the nerve itself, can cause pain going down the leg, sciatic type pain. Uh, you could have tumors that press on the nerve. We can have a spondylolisthesis, which is one vertebra sliding forward on the other vertebra, causing a compression of that nerve. You can also have something like diabetes, which causes nerve damage or can cause nerve damage, which can cause sciatic-like symptoms. So the recommendation with these stretches is they may not work instantly because you may have inflammation from uh, previous trauma. So you can wait 10 days or so and try the stretches again. If they, they may take a little while to kick in, but if you're doing these stretches and the pain just becomes severely intense, pain goes further down your leg into your foot and it wasn't there before, then by all means stop the, extra, stop the stretching and consult with your uh, primary care physician, your chiropractor, physical therapist, and you may need to have an MRI or other imaging to determine what the cause of your sciatic symptoms is. So with all that being said, let's get to the exercises and hope they work for you. The first stretch we're gonna go over is the seated knee to chest. So whatever side your sciatic symptoms are on, you're gonna pull that knee up sitting in a chair and back nice and straight and pull the affected knee or affected leg to your chest and you're gonna hold that for about 30 seconds. And you're gonna do each one of these things for about four to six repetitions. So hold each one 30 to 60 seconds. This stretch can also be performed laying on the floor Bring your affected leg to your chest, keep your back nice and flat, engage the core, tighten the abs a bit, and bring that left leg, in this case, to your chest and hold it for 30 seconds, do three to four repetitions. The next stretch is gonna be a seated hamstring stretch. For the affected side, in this case, is the left leg. You're gonna sit in the edge of a chair, lean forward, try to grab your feet, if you can't get that far, if you can only get to your knee, that's fine. You want to feel the tension in the back of your leg. Uh, if anything causes severe pain going further down the leg, then stop. It's not the right time to do these yet. And we're going to hold this stretch for about 30 seconds and then do three to four repetitions. This exercise can also be performed using a towel or a yoga strap. Lay on the floor, back nice and flat, engage your core and put the towel around your foot, the infected side, in this case, the left side sciatica. And we're gonna to pull to our comfort zone, feeling a stretch in the back of the leg. And you're gonna hold this stretch again for 30 seconds and try to do four to five repetitions. Stretch number three is called the piriformis stretch. So in case your, your sciatic symptoms are coming from the piriformis muscle compressing the nerve, we'll sit in the chair with our back nice and straight you're going to take the affected side leg and put the ankle of the affected side leg over the other knee. And we're going to lean forward and feel that stretch in the butt region. And you're going to hold that for about 30 seconds. And we're going to do three to four repetitions of that stretch. Leaning forward with the upper body, feeling a nice deep stretch in the glutes or the butt region on that left side in this case, the side where the sciatic symptoms are coming from. The piriformis stretch can also be done laying down. So in this case, if there's left side sciatic pain, grab the affected side leg, bend it up to the chest, and turn it in at 90 degrees like a figure four, and then bend the opposite leg up so that's pushing against the affected side, and take your hands behind the thigh of the non-affected leg and pull in which is going to stretch the left-sided sciatic nerve piriformis region. And hold that stretch for about 30 seconds and repeat four to five times. Stretch number four is called a pigeon pose in yoga. So in this case, you're going to do the best you can because these are a little bit more difficult than the other ones we just showed you. You're going to take the affected side leg, which in this case, again, is the left side, and you're going to bend the knee at 90 degrees, close to as, as possible. 
and you're gonna basically sit back with your other leg extended or straight behind you. Try to uh, keep your back nice and straight or straight as you can and feel that stretch in your left butt and piriformis area. This is a great stretch for the muscles around the hip and the low back, including the piriformis muscle. Another angle for this stretch, straight on. You can start from a downward dog position, bending the affected side, left leg in this case, underneath the body, trying to keep a 90 degree angle. And then to add some stretch into the low back hip area, lean forward as far as you can. And really feel that stretch in the low back and hip region. Hold that stretch for 30 seconds. Repeat four to five times. If you're having trouble reaching the floor with your butt on that stretch, you can take a yoga block and put it underneath the left side, in this case, the butt cheek, so you don't have to stretch down as far. And then continue on with that stretch, trying to put your chest toward the floor, extending your opposite leg and getting a stretch in the entire hip low back region. The next exercise or stretch is called a nerve glide, a sciatic nerve glide, which is done in order to get a sciatic nerve that may be impinged between muscles or restricted within fascia, trying to free up the nerve so that it slides smoothly, reducing pain that you may have down the leg. And it's good to do this if you can on a table that has some room underneath it to bring your leg underneath but if you don't have that you can use a chair and do the best you can it should help either way so to start with this position we're going to sit up nice and straight we're going to take the affected side so in this case let's say you have left sciatic nerve pain you're going to extend the left leg up and then point the toes at the ceiling at the same time you're going to bring your neck back and look at the ceiling and then on the way down you do the exact opposite you bring your leg down point your toes to the ground and bring your head down We'll try that again. We'll bring the knee up, point the toes to the ceiling, and bring the head all the way back. And then back down the opposite way. Bring the knee down, point the toes down, and flex your neck. And we can do this 10 or 15 times, and we do this three or four sets of these. From the side view, you're going to bring your left leg up, point the toes, and then bring your neck all the way back looking at the ceiling. And then on the opposite, bring your leg down, point your toes down, and bring your neck down at the same time. So what this is doing is flossing that nerve that goes from the bottom of the foot all the way up into the back. We're trying to floss it through all the areas that the nerve is going through to free it up from any adhesions that may have formed. And with any of these exercises and stretches that we showed you, don't try to be an expert and make sure they're done perfectly. Uh, just make sure that you know you try the best you can, get as much range of motion as you can. They should help. With our patients, they do work very well with anyone with sciatic pain. So do the best you can. Don't worry about the best proper form. The goal of these exercises and stretches is not perfection, but relief of symptoms. If you found the video useful, Go ahead and hit that like button, tap the notification bell, and consider subscribing to the channel. See you next time.